started playing with my torches that don't work. Well, this one works. Just over the, over the years, I've slowly gotten a few of them working, but only two of them. These five have will need some restoration to get working. And this one, well, it's, it's pretty common for these to break. That was my fault. I dropped it off of a shelf. I bumped a shelf and it fell off, but we can fix that. But what's bad is I, this was extremely tight and I unscrewed it and just metal filings went everywhere and they're just caked on here. I believe that might be lead. A lead sealer, maybe? Yeah, they're just everywhere. But the good news is the threads inside of there are nice and healthy. This has lead caked on it as well. At least I'm assuming it's lead. I guess there might be a lead bearing or a lead um, seal, I guess. Yeah, a lead seal. This is just very quick. So I don't mind doing this on the floor. Okay. So now we can see a little bit. I don't think that has a lead seal in it, but someone might have tried to put one in there. We'll have to see. It probably originally had one in there. We'll see if we can do like some Teflon or something. But for now, it might be possible to get away with nothing. At the very least, I'll be able to close it without breaking it now. And... One nice thing about this Bakelite is there's so many little like teeth and grooves that if I just press it together it'll kind of just stick so I can actually use it as a handle. Okay, so What I'll probably do for this is I might cast new lead in this and then turn it on the lathe and put a, a, a drill hole through it, through that lead plug, and that might be good enough. Now, I, I've already restored this. Okay, so it is blowing dust out the back here. And the hole is plugged. But at least I can take it out now without risking breaking it. Oh no! That's not good. This is a, a strange glow lamp. Most of the other ones are so straightforward. I suspect. I suspect that this was a newer mo a newer one, and they got fancy and cheap at the same time. Trying to see ever so slightly a hole in there. So maybe tapping it. Lots of stuff is coming out. And now the hole's plugged back up. I bet all these metal filings are inside that hole. I spread out a little bit. 
And it um, kind of crunched around, but then it sprayed a bunch of stuff out, so... Very, very faint. Might not be able to see it. Yeah, oh well. Okay, I finally got it to go in. The trick is to go in until you start feeling touching the um, the jet or whatever. lot of play in here. Just kind of jiggle it a little bit. And that's how you do it. Hopefully I didn't ruin it just now. Good. Okay. Definitely not holding pressure, so let's try something else. That's kind of nasty. Hmm. That one is seized or something. I put a bunch of WD-40 in it. Maybe we can crack it open later. Oh, that. Oh, okay. This one's working. Plunger's gone. Oh, it's cracked. That's why. I need to find a good way to replace those. Let's check out the last, the last one. Now these ones were found at the scrapyard. These four, I believe. I got to talking to the guy, to the old guy at the scrapyard, and he was like, "Well, you like wool torches? We got several wool torches here." And he pulled them out of a drawer. Evidently, they'd been, uh, you know, like the scrap guys. They they do have a heart. They they do keep things from the from the dump. If it looks cool enough. There's even a, a, a secret little location in the back of the scrapyard where they just kind of the workers take stuff that looks too good to throw away and other people buy it. Oh, me. That doesn't look great. We got something good here. This is just a dried out plunger. A little bit of engine oil will help to give a few more years of life to that. I mean, my main blow lamp that I have, I got that back in like 2010 and I just put some engine oil on the dried out plunger and it's worked for years. Now that is a different story. Okay. That's not as worrying. So inside of here, there's a little round piece of leather, which looks like it's in good condition too. This might have actually been rebuilt. And then in here is a little 
spring-loaded plunger. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get sewing machine oil. I used to use engine oil, but I feel like trying sewing machine oil. Mayhap that can just add a little bit of life back to this mechanism. Okay, now it works good. And one more drop. I'll take this and rub it on my leather apron just to make sure there's a nice smooth surface for it to butt up against. Okay, so now that's a one-way valve and um, Maybe not. Now this is the same kind of oil that I used last time. In fact, I used to use this for so much stuff. This random thing of oil that my dad's boss got. He got the wrong oil for his car, so we gave it to my dad and he didn't have a use for it. So let's take a little bit like that. And just soak it in that. No real cracks in the handles, so that's good. I Means it's a nice, nice, strong Bakelite handle. Okay. It's a bit rusty. I'll wash it up. bit of corrosion indentation there. Might have had some water leaking on it. I can't tell if that has a lead seal in it or not. I'm thinking it might. I never thought about it having a lead seal before, but now that I see all those other pieces and the other thing, it might. And there's some metal on the threads here, so it very well may be a lead. That's a nice tight fit, so that's good. I had lunch, actually dinner, but whatever. That's unfortunate. It's just too loose in there. That's a real shame. So I'm going to get some thin leather. Well, I mean, I probably have some gloves somewhere that have nice thin leather. Oh, that's a good idea. I bet some of this thin goat skin would work great. If I can't find a pair of gloves I want to sacrifice here, then uh, I'm sure I have a pile on the inside somewhere. Okay. That glove's good. That glove's good. This pair is all worn to shit. And if I weld with that, I might get bit by the electricity. So we have thick leather and we have thin goatskin leather. These are my favorite kind of gloves too, but I have like eight pairs of these, so that's not too bad. 
could reuse things that I know I won't be using anytime soon. Well, anytime now. <laughs> Look at that. That's so stupid looking. So that's too thin. But this, it is a bit thinner actually. I think we might be able to try that and then later on maybe I'll come back whenever it's developed this cup shape and I can trim it down to only the parts that I need. However, I do worry that the excess leather could cause it to um, ripple or wrinkle or whatever. So we'll have to see how it how it does. I know it's a bit cheaty, but hey, I mean, whatever works. No, I'll need a thicker piece of leather. But this might work on one of the other ones, so let's go open up one of the other ones and see if maybe this thinner piece of leather can work on that. Okay, it came off. That is a thinner piece of leather, so it might work on this one. I'll put this original one back on. No reason in taking it off, it might still work. Oh, here's an idea. Since this one's probably too old to use anyway, I will put it alongside. <laughs> Look at that. I'm turning it inside out and putting it on the back washer, flipping it around, which should make it bigger. And that ripped it. That's unfortunate. But maybe turning it inside out would actually work. <gasps> okay, so keeping on the same direction but just turning it inside out. Oh! Because it's supposed to um, it's supposed to um, mushroom out. I 
At least it does work. Lots of surprising turn of events. Okay. Okay, if we can get this working, then we can further tear down that one and take a look at it too. You know what, for this one, I'm just going to try turning that. Oh, oh, no. Ah, that, that thing fall, it's falling apart in my hands. Oh, well. I may wish to make those holes smaller. It's a little bit more shaping. you fill it up? Weird. So you actually have to unscrew it to fill it up. Unless you're supposed to just finally use the plug underneath. I don't know. That's definitely an odd one. But most of these have odd designs. Oh. Okay, so the end little one-way check valve does look fairly okay. That's a good that's a good sign. I just realized what's going on here. That, that's actually a metal cup. I thought that was a hardened leather cup. And that little metal cup is supposed to have a little little gasket inside of it. Just a, a cup that's just have a little ring of well lump of leather and it presses up against that tube. So I'll just cut a little piece of leather for it and should be good. Look at that. Yeah, so that gunk I was scraping away, turned out it was the leather from the valve.
It's working. Nice. Well then, we may have restored two units. Oh, let me just... Not bad. Hey, and I can see all the way through it. So that's good. Let's start with this one, which I didn't even touch because it seems to have good compression. How you start these is you pump it up and you open the valve, it should spray out the front. Oops. The bug in there. Didn't want that. Well, maybe this one does need some service. It's coming out the back very slowly. Well, I can't seem to get much out of that. But it comes out the back perfectly fine, so let's light it. Let it heat up. Weird. It's not burning very well. Might be a bit of a mixture of like bad fuel. Maybe there's some left in there. But while that's going, I'll move that over here. This one. Okay, so this one, I best keep it away from that. Well, that might have a blockage in there somewhere. Okay, so that comes out, definitely. out nice that's got some issues
It should not need to be pumped that hard. This one needs to be tilted back so it falls down. Make sure I'm not harboring any un unwanted flames. So this one's not as good because its design, it does not make it collect fuel in the bottom there. Very good. Looks like that just needed to be clog uh, unclogged or whatever. Tighten this down. This one's promising, this one not so much, and this one I don't think it'll even... Yeah, it's not even... Oh, it's getting to the temperature where it, it's starting to do it. Well, that one's just brilliant, but this one is kind of just floundering. I do like this one because the, the pump is away from the flames, so you don't have to worry about it getting into the, the pump.
sorry. And to think that these were just at the scrapyard. They just needed a little bit of love and care. Well, they need a lot of love and care, but you know, whatever. This one needs to seal better. Now, the real trick is let them die out for a little bit. Make sure the flames are out. And then open this just enough to let the pressure leak out. Then unscrew it. For whenever it cools down, it'll contract around this and it'll, be, it'll get become stuck and you can sometimes break the handles. Now this one's more difficult because not on the top. Oh, and that's on the bottom too, so all the fuel leaks out. Now one good thing I notice is that the other one that was having issues is still squirting. I can only hear it now that all these ones have shut off. So this one it's obviously still going, but it's so weak that where's this one? Oh, it's this one. I didn't close it. I didn't open it all the way. Well, that's good. It means you have to go seal. Well, nice. I think I deserve a clickbaity thumbnail, like dual wheel blowtorch. Well. Somehow, that one's gotten fiery again. I bet what's happening is some of the stuff is actually being whipped up into the top where it's boiling. I bet that's probably what, because I got these things pretty hot. So yeah, dual wielding. Low lamps. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.